Okay, George, I think all right. we're all, everybody's in from the waiting room. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, and welcome to the July 28, 2022 Northampton Planning Board meeting. Um, there's uh, one large agenda item, an application by uh, Cousins Investments that we'll be dealing with later on. And then we have some uh, more bureaucratic things towards the end of the meeting. Uh, but before we open up the, the hearing for Cousins Investments, we do share some time for uh, any public comments that does not have to do with the agenda items today. So if anyone would like to make a comment to the planning board about other issues in the city, please raise your hand or use that react that uh, raise hand feature on the toolbar. I don't see any hands. Okay, so hearing none, we'll move right into our um, first item of business, which is a special permit by Cousins Investment LLC for a new car dealership at 48 Damon Road, map ID 18B-34. Um, Carolyn, uh, before we have the presentation, by the applicant and their parties. Could you just give us a little background on the previous um, special permit hearing that we held two years ago? Sure. So this project, um, car sales um, require a special permit in the general business district. So this property is in the general business district. Um, I'm sure the applicant's going to also go over sort of what's changed between two years ago and now, but just briefly, um, they, at the time, two years ago, um, there was, um, a timing issue for the applicant, not, um, needing to move into the space quickly, but not having fully pledged plans about what the build out of the site was going to be. So the planning board granted a special permit, but gave a two year window, um, I believe it was two years, um, in which they, uh, so it, it, it would become null and void at the end of that window. So they need to reapply. And the idea was that at that point they would have more concepts, more than just a concept of how they wanna build out. And so that's why they're back here, but it's a brand new permit. So if, if um, members of the planning board were not present at the last one, that doesn't matter. This is newly advertised, um, newly noticed to the abutters. And so it's a brand new permit. Special permit requires a vote of five positive as a special permit. Um, so that's a super majority vote um, of the planning board. Great. Great. And we're all familiar that at this location, there's a lot of road work going on by the Max DOT, so which has created also some some little wrinkles in the application and during the past two years, the uh, realignment of the roads and all. So, so okay, why don't we move on to the uh, applicant's representatives for a presentation? Now. Very good. My name is Kimberly Maslick, and I'm an engineer with BL Companies, and I have. Tommy Kazenzi here with me tonight on behalf of the applicant Cousins Investments. Um, so Carolyn nailed it with what she said pretty much. Um, when we were back here in 2020, there was a lot of things up in the air and they weren't sure what they were gonna do. This was the old K-Lane building for the body shop on 32. And then Bo Max was leasing um, the facility on 48 Damon Road, which previously Carla and Tommy Kazenzi had used for Volkswagen before they built their new dealerships around the corner um, on King Street. And when they went to reoccupy it, as Carolyn mentioned, um, there was a, you know, we realized they needed a special use permit. Um, even though historically it had been operated like that, um, I just think the paperwork, you know, we needed to catch up with that. So um, we did that and it does in fact expire in August. So that's um, one of the reasons why we're here. And of course they have a much better handle on what's going on. So um, you probably have driven by there many times already and can see uh, DOT has actively been working there. Uh, it's our understanding that hopefully they'll be done in the fall. And we've had several discussions with them um, with regards to kind of merging these two plans. So I can talk about that a little bit more when I go through the plans with you. Um, 
And then also, um, you know, Tommy Carr Collision Center actually took over where it used to be K Lane. So they're currently operating on the 32 Damon Road lot. Um, these are both, these two lots are in common ownership and they share parking and display for um, the Volvo dealership as well. So, and Volvo wants to do renovations. Really the extent is more related to the building, the interior and the facade, kind of upgrading that to their image program. So uh, Carolyn, can I share here? Yes, okay. Um, so I'm going to try and do this. Oops. All right. Can you see my screen or are you? Yes. Good okay. Go. Good. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. So let me actually, so this is just the existing conditions plan and Damon Road runs horizontally across here. Industrial Drive is across the street. This is the Volvo dealership here. And this is um, Tommy Car Collision. And on this plan, I'm actually gonna zoom in a little bit here. You can see that there's really, there were two curb cuts along this road. And one of the concerns and things that the planning board wanted to see last time was having this closed off. And this is all paved right here. So you can drive all the way around this. Um, and they wanted to see this closed off as well and made more like a, a, you know, a gathering place, something with a little more curb appeal. And um, over here, Mass DOT actually proposed a widening. So while the property line remained the same, they have an easement to do a widening in this area that's, that's reflected on our plans um, as we move forward here, so. Actually, gonna go to the layout. All right. So, basically, this limit of disturbance line right here is really the back of sidewalk that's going in with mass the, with the road work here, and this is one of their dashed easement lines that they have. Basically, on the back of this sidewalk, they had proposed just a few changes from the DOT plan. We've been working with them um, on several things because when these plans went through, there were some things that kind of got overlooked that um, really needed to be addressed in order to keep the dealership functioning and also um, to meet the requirements that you all had as, as um, in our last special permit. So like closing this part here, We've already talked to DOT and they're doing that as a field change. Um, this driveway, they originally had shrunk it down to 24, but then a car carrier can't get onto this site and do their turning movements on site. So we requested that they widen that and they worked with us on that one. Um, and then over here, there was a retaining wall proposed, but because of the green space requirements that we were talking about last time in 2020, although it was really from the property line, which is out here, but the intent is from the sidewalk essentially to have that kind of buffer, uh, the green space. So we're able to grade that out instead of having a retaining wall. So we can grade it out and landscape it. And that's a win-win for everybody. Um, the other thing that kind of came out of this is there were existing light poles along the street roadway here that were owned by DOT and had lights on them for that were actually serving this parcel. So we do have a few proposed light poles, obviously LED with cutoffs and everything. So that'll actually be an upgrade um, as well that comes in with this project. And then of course, this, this front area here um, and having connectivity, first of all, getting rid of all this paved area and making it a pedestrian plaza instead of, um, you know, one, one where there may be vehicles. So basically we've had the concrete sidewalk all the way across the front and connection here to the, uh, the new, the sidewalks that are all being put in here with bike racks as well. So, and then we have landscaping along here that's in our plan as well. And we just have, so these are just um, linden trees all throughout the front here that we had essentially on our last proposal. Um, so 
site work really, again, it's minimal. It's just kind of repaint, restriping some of these lines in this area. Um, having the EV charging stations, actually, I didn't point that out, but they're adding a couple of EV charging stations while they're doing this. This um, There's a little stair here on this entrance to service department, <clears throat> and that needs to be replaced. So they're doing that. And then there is a step right here. So that will be removed and it'll be made accessible um, from, from over here and here. So we'll have that um, building facade. I think I'm gonna jump to, this probably actually shows it even, let me see. So Google Earth hasn't even been updated <laughs> from back in the day, but this is when Vomax had it. Um, and essentially this facade has been the same for eons, it seems. So they're gonna do some, some upgrades here and essentially have, leave the glass um, where it stands, but then do ACM panels around the front. This EFIS material that they have now, they'll paint all that, clean it up, paint it. The same thing with the block. So they've got you know, some block along the base and then this, this does return on the sides of, this is the service side, obviously, and this is kind of the showroom side. That returns, and then it goes back to um, the service department. Let me just show you on here. So this is all the service bays in the back of the building here. Um, and those, no change proposed, but they'll, this is masonry block, so they'll paint all that, and that'll be cleaned up around the building. Um, so that, that's the proposal, uh, pretty straightforward. They just wanna, there's really no changes in operation. They wanna just continue to operate how they have been in the past and um, you know, make, these, make these little improvements to kind of coordinate this plan with DOT on this side and have that pedestrian plaza over here right in front of the, the Volvo. Would you mind spending just a minute on your lighting plan that was included? Oh, sure. Yep. All right. Forgot about that. <laughs> so, as I mentioned, there's existing poles along the, the street frontage here um, that actually point towards their display in this lot over in this area. So we have three of those, three new poles proposed, 16 foot mounting height, um, LEDs, I think the fixtures were on. These wall pack, you know, there's wall packs around the building, but there's no, no spillage anywhere. Um, so that's not an issue. Um, and then we had, yeah, so you can see again the, the mounting height and the, the fixtures that were selected for the poles and the, and the wall packs here. Dark sky compliant, LED, yeah, pretty. Current pretty lights cool. that are up high on the telephone poles, they'll be coming down. Yes, <laughs> yep. They're like stadium lights right now. They are. Yep, so this will modernize that um, significantly. Thank you. Sure. Any other clarifying questions from the planning board? Well, we could move over to the public then and see if anybody is here who would like to speak in, in favor of the proposal or anybody who has questions or objections. If you uh, Maybe we could uh, go back to gallery view just for a minute, Carolyn. Sure. We might have to go back and forth. Is there anyone out there who would like to comment on the plan, on the application? I know there aren't a lot of abutters in that neighborhood, which helps. All right, well, hearing none, we'll go back to the board. Um, that, uh, that sidewalk is continuous from the railroad tracks across the front of your two lots all the way to the underpass, I guess, correct? Yes, that's the DOT sidewalk. And then we have this connection point here and 
it connects our internal parking field essentially. Yep. And I, I couldn't see it. The detail is too small, but I think marked on your plans is a, a bike rack or two. It is. Do you want me to share again? No, as long as it's, it's, no. it's there. So yeah. I just did. Yes, okay. it is. It's right in the front connection where we connect the two, um, the street walk to the on site walk. Yes. Anything else, planning board, before I monopolize all our time? No. Um, Looks pretty straightforward to me. Yeah. Yeah. I moved to. Sorry, Sam. Go ahead. I moved to close public comment. I'll let Tom on have... for a few minutes till we make okay. sure. I still have a couple of questions for the applicant. Okay. Um. The and and this is for my own education too. The whole signage situation, Carolyn, is an application or a permit with the building department? Um, yes, yeah. so the signs are dealt with through a sign application and if they're allowed by right, then they just move forward. If they need additional review, it goes to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, so that's even the, the placement of that within the, the plan, it's not up to us. Right. You mean the wall signs? And no, not the wall signs. So currently there's a large, it's empty now, but if they put anything near the sidewalk or in the green space. So there are, right. So a ground sign, they already, have, there's already one ground sign. You're only allowed one per parcel. So if they want to reuse that, typically what applicants do is just reface it with new panels. If they wanted a new ground sign, they'd have to meet this requirements for, um, for setbacks, I believe it's 15 feet in this district. I can't remember off the top of my head. So um, if it meant that they had to um, adjust or move trees or any other significant portion of the landscaping, then it might trigger a review by the planning board, but otherwise it wouldn't. So does the applicant have a plan for a ground sign? Are, are they gonna reuse the location that's there so we did show um we did show the two signs where we had them proposed one is a new location um the other one is i think essentially the same but um we we, were, we noted on here that it was going to be under a separate permit just so that it was clear that it wasn't included in this okay and and again I, i'm really sorry but the plans are difficult for me to see all the fine print. Um, it's not interfering with any of the placement of the trees. Correct. Because I know on King Street, we often have a little negotiation with the landowner about the street trees impacting mm -hmm. the visual of the sign. So I wanna make sure we don't run into that five years from now as the trees flesh out. Okay, yep. Um, Carolyn, I, I, I thought within our tree guidance, our tree ordinance, we often didn't put the same species. What are there? How many are there? 10, 12 trees along one running line. Is that true? Can did the, the tree warden have any look at this plan to say whether all lindens are okay? Um. No, um, but again, the tree warden it doesn't have jurisdiction in the private property. Sometimes that um, the tree warden would make a recommendation about the plans, but certainly the planning board could suggest a variety of trees for that purpose to ensure that you know if one get the purpose of that, of course, is if one species um, succumbs to infestation or um, disease that it won't kill the whole trees, all the trees at once and that there's some diversity there for that reason. So you could certainly, uh, I mean, the applicant is allowed to pick from all the whole host of street trees. So um, you could certainly make a condition that um, there be a variety, a mix so that there isn't, um, you know, if they're doing 10, that it's not more than two or three of one species, whatever you feel is um, appropriate. 
Would the planning board members be okay with that as a condition? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, there's a lot of talk in our town and we've received some money to design the new bike trail to go out to Hatfield. But my understanding, Carolyn, is that's on the other side of 91. Have you seen any? That's not along the railroad tracks here, right? Right. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's on the other side of 91. Okay. Right. And there is no traffic mitigation required because this is reusing an existing property that previously had um, the same type of use. So it's not a new impact. All right. Well, hearing no other questions, we could go back to Sam's suggestion. You still with us, Sam? Oh, I am. I'm COVID and all. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I just wanted to, I didn't, I didn't, I'm sorry, Kim, if I missed this um, about the landscape treatment along the front in front of the building um, and modifications there. Mm -hmm. So basically that's all paved area right now and that'll be removed. You'll have the sidewalk at the street line. That's the DOT, you'll have the sidewalk along the facade basically that connects the lots and then in between it's just a manicured maintained land, you know, lawn with those trees. And as the board note, I um, noted, um, I had mentioned in the staff memo that there was an issue about parking in front of the building. There's no parking allowed in this district between the building and the street. Um, so even before the landscaping and the modifications are changed to that area, it's still not allowed to have parking there. Um, and um, so that has happened in the past couple of years where they've been storing vehicles or allowing vehicles there. So, um, you know, even before they start construction, that wouldn't be allowed. Okay. The applicant is on, so they're hearing. And just to follow up on that, to, to clarify that rendering that you showed of the updates that are gonna be made to the outside of the building did not show that grassy area. I mean, that still showed just a paved yep. uh, this stretch. Is, yeah, um, and this one, it is draft. Um, I just wanted to show this definitely for visual, but that landscaping is not on there. You're correct. But it, but it will be, that's, that's what yes, we're Yes, it will be, yes. Got yep. it. It's this, I, I just included that other one so you guys would have a good visual um, instead of the black and white elevations. Thank you. So last opportunity before we close the public comment period, is anyone who would like to make a comment regarding the application? All right, hearing none, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I move to close public comment. A second. Thanks, Jenna. All right, the motion's been made and seconded. Any comment on the motion? All right, hearing none because it's Zoom, we'll go through that voice vote. And uh, I'll start with uh, David. Yep. And Chris? Yes. And Jana? Yes. And Sam? Yes. And George? Okay. Unanimous to close the public comment portion. So now it's uh, back to the board. It looks like we just have two conditions at this point. That there is no interaction, Carolyn, with DPW on this. No change in the stormwater plan, um, nothing of that nature. Um, they did, did you all see the comments in the file? They did have a few comments, I think, but I mean, basically this, um, I'm just going to pull those up. I'm sorry. Here. Um, and I believe, um, Kim, you saw those. I know public hearing is closed, but I just, maybe you could nod your head. <laughs> um, I think we forwarded those on. Um, I think Tim had those. 
Okay. Um, yeah, let me just see. Um, sorry. I just want to double check them before we, um, but uh, there were not, um, as far as I recall, there, whoops, wrong one, sorry. Yeah, there were, um, here we go. Um, they just, um, were no, they just noticed that, um, the, they wanted clarification about the drive aisle widths, um, and so that there may not be enough space for turning around in the northern, um, north corner where there's some proposed spaces, but it's, um, but they had no comments about the stormwater. Great, thanks. So I think there are only two conditions, uh, one being around the trees that we might, we'll ask the applicant to provide a mix um, of the trees on the plan, not to be all of one species, to no more than three of any one species. I think you can find from our city list trees that grow to the same height and the same kind of spread um, that are still attractive along that, that frontage. So there's that condition. And the other one is that there's a, and, and Carolyn, I don't know if it's in an ordinance or, or if it's a condition specifically here that there will be no display, no vehicle parking in the front of the building, between the building and the road. That is a current, currently in a zoning requirement. So um, it, it doesn't need to be a condition. I think thought it was important to raise that because that hasn't nope. been, um, complied with uh, recently. Um, so I just it's sort of duly noted that that's the zoning requires that and enforcement could um, enforcement action um, hopefully won't be necessary. <laughs> um, it would save everyone time and effort and um, hassle <laughs> that it just complies. And, and we've acknowledged for the minutes that we didn't need a, a traffic a full traffic study here because it's uh, an existing use, really. Right. All right. Uh, any other conditions that we're missing? So it's really just down to that one around the trees. Okay. All right. If there are no other issues to bring up, um, we can certainly entertain a motion. Entertaining a motion from the planning board. Uh, I move we uh, <laughs> approve the application with the aforementioned tree diversity uh, condition. Okay, Looking at one more. No, Sam. I think we agreed that uh, the the. The bit about parking in front of the building is already uh, um, in the city ordinance in okay. the zoning regulation, so we don't need to add that as a condition. We just I, I, to... I second. All right, motion's been made to accept the special permit application by Cousins Investment LLC. It's been made and seconded. Any comments? All right, hearing none, we'll go to that Zoom voice vote. Uh, David? Yep. And Chris? Yes. And Jana? Yes. And Sam? Yes. All right. And uh, the chair, George, also votes yes. So that's unanimous. Congratulations. Good luck with your. Thank you very much. Okay, so one I, I, I just wanted to follow up on this thing about the parking in front, just a clarification. Is that all of the highway highway business district? 
it's not highway business. This is oh, actually this one's not. not. Yeah, this one's general business district. So in all the oh. general business districts, yeah. I so, mean, oh, so so all those car dealerships on King Street that do have parking in front, that's okay. Yeah. Because that's highway business. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's a, that is all. <laughs> I, I, I actually I have one more question. Um, so how do we go about like what is the mechanism for you know if there is a violation of parking in the future, what's what is that supposed to be? What, um, the path you mean to um, rectify yeah. that? So um, anybody can file a complaint with the building department. The building commissioner in Massachusetts is officially the zoning code enforcement officer. So it goes through the building department. They do an inspection. Um, and um, seek compliance. And if there's unwillingness for compliance, there are other steps that can be taken, fines, um, and so forth, um, that can be applied for non-compliance. Yeah, because I keep on wondering this relative to the net, the net of parking or net of police situation, which we, they finish, they finish their parking lot. I don't understand why there's still a police officer there. That's different. That's not a zoning thing. That is, <laughs> yeah. So um, um, it's, they've asked and they're paying the police department. But we explicitly um, said when we, okay their special permit that that not be the case so i understand that they want such a thing but we said we when we uh, when we okayed that permit we said we we actually said once this parking is done there's no there's no police and uh, i'm i'm getting a little tired of a police presence directly in in the beginning of our city. Tim, so I, I just, oh, if okay. I remember correctly, it wasn't so much about the extra police, but along Con Street, they have used cones to block off a lot of the on street parking and some of the right. travel lanes. That's what I, they asked them to remove. Okay, well, I understood it as the police that are on whatever that street there are that I don't understand why they've taken a private street for themselves. Um, so again, that is actually um, um, something that would be appropriate to take up with your city councilor and the councilors at large. Um, I because that is not a zoning issue. It was about the cones on Con Street, and you, I, I, I think I, that I actually, I, I, I'd like some, someone to go back and clarify that because that was not at least when I voted on this thing. I did not think of it as cones on con, the cones on con street. I thought of it as relative to the police in front of where the police presence has always been. And I'd like that to be looked at because it really bothers me that we have a police, we have a private business taking up that is, I don't care if they're paying for it. It doesn't matter how my understanding of it. And I could have been out of it. It's per, certainly, certainly okay, but it's, um, I, I'd like that to be checked because when I okayed that, my thought was the police on whatever that tiny street is called. I, I, I agree with um, Sam's sentiment. I, what I guess I'm hearing is that like, there is not really a zoning uh, remedy here that we should ask city council to address this. And I would sign on to Sam, whatever you, you know, we can talk offline about if we yeah. wanna go to the city councilors uh, and ask for some remedy. I mean, I think all, just I would add, Sam, that I think that that was represented as well, uh, sort of their plan and their acknowledgement that they didn't need that um, traffic control anymore uh -huh. um, as they needed it as being when they were the first operator um, yep. coming on to the, um, into the state. Um, yes. And so I think you're right that I, I think I remember that as well, that there was a conversation that, that, that it was no longer necessary, but as, as David said, it's not within the purview of the zoning or the, the zoning ordinance or the planning board about that piece. Okay, so we just have to, I mean, listen, I don't, I'm not trying to take away 
extra dollars for police officers, but this is just needs to end. Just plenty, plenty of pot shops. They don't, they don't need, our, they don't need our police department as their private security system. Look, I look forward to hearing what you and David find out about a remedy for that that public street. All right, let's. We have uh, just now our our favorite A and R. Well, we'll start with the one on the corner of Norwood and Warner. This is um, you can can you all see the screen? Fine. Yep. Um, so this is really an instance where there's a piece of property at the back of the parcel that will be transferred from one owner to the other. So um, this larger parcel A is transferring this rectangle. Um, parcel B1 to parcel B. So it's not creating a new lot, but it's changing lot boundaries. So I need a vote um, to in, have these plans endorsed as not creating a new subdivision. I move to endorse this ANR at Warner and Norwood Ave. I second. Motion's been made and seconded. It, it, is that second dwelling there currently? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Any comments? All right, we'll go to a voice vote. Uh, why don't we go backwards this time? George votes yes. Um, Sam? Yes. Deanna? Yes. And Chris? Yes. And David? Okay. Congratulations. Okay. Folks. Oops. All right. Um, sorry, here. Uh, oops. Okay. Um, the next one is on Nanatuck. And um, can you see the screen, the new plan set? Oh. So there, there are a lot of lines on here, so I'll try to explain it. So Nanatuck Street is here. There are, this is taking existing parcels and re-dividing re the lines. Um, lot one is an existing house. Lot two is an existing house. What is being proposed is to change the lot boundary for lot one and slide it over here next to um, this house. So this would be, this would create a, a reduced lot line um, parcel, uh, single family home. Um, by changing this line. So the plans um, will need to be stamped to that effect that it's following those criteria, which require, you know, have its own requirements. Lot two is, um, is uh, not, is sort of, is changing by um, creating this line going down this, what's called a paper street. Formerly it was a, you know, originally it was planned as a street. Um, and the frontage is here, over here to the other. So lot two's frontage is here. And then lot three and four are new parcels. Um, lot three, has frontage here in this hatched out area, which is gonna be an easement across this existing shared driveway. And lot four is a standalone parcel here um, uh, that meets the minimum lot size as well. So three and four are newly configured lots with, um, you don't currently have houses, lots one and two are just shifted boundaries and they both have existing houses on them, but they all meet the minimum frontage. And, um, 
anything new that would be constructed would be evaluated at the time of building permit submittal and may or may not trigger planning board review, but you're just looking at the lot boundaries and the frontage is the only thing that you can really evaluate is that these lots have frontage along the um, public way, Nonatuck Street, and um, that therefore it's not creating a new subdivision. Carolyn, um, so we don't care if the setback is non-conforming in lot one. We just care so that lot it, one has frontage. Um, you technically you can't um, you you have to endorse a plan if it meets the frontage, but you as the planning board or staff or anybody can write all sorts of things on the plans like this building is non-conforming and requires a variance or this building has to meet the criteria of reduced lot line in this case we do have a provision for reduced side lot line boundaries um, so long as there's a total of um, 20 feet between structures and the shared with that shared side lot line so um, we can make those notes on the plan sometimes the surveyor makes the notes on the plan sometimes our office makes the notes on the plan, but the planning board is only evaluating whether the lots shown have adequate frontage. Okay, and then just sorry, there's a lot of a lot of words, a lot of lines. Um, where's the frontage for lot three? It's um, right here. So do you okay. see my arrow? Yeah. Okay, so lot three has the access easement for lots one and two on it. Right. Okay. But I, lot three is access off the shared driveway. I thought we allowed three houses off a shared driveway. And we do, but they would need to have a permit to add the third house. They don't, they only have a permit for lot one and two from years ago. So it's in a, it would have to come forward before this house can be built. It would need a permit from the planning board in the very least or a shared driveway amendment. So this way they're avoiding having to come forward for a permit because they have frontage now. Um, well, anywhere in the city, if you have frontage, you can create a single family house lot and not have a have to go through for permits. Um, so this is um just another scenario of a situation where they are creating a lot that um would require use of a shared driveway um to access i mean they could put this how do you see my arrow here yeah. they could put the house right here and it would still meet the requirements as long as they met the reduced lot line with a um you know setback here um, and then they wouldn't need a, sh I mean, the problem is there's already a shared driveway there. So um, they would, um, couldn't put the house here unless they um, created two separate lots, uh, two separate driveway access points, which they could do as well. They could just extinguish all of this shared driveway here, create a new driveway yep. for lot one, a new yep. driveway for lot two, and then yep. this lot three would have its own driveway. Okay, thank you. So does the planning board want to put the note about the, you know, the 20 foot space between structures or, or whatever? Can you write that note for us, Carolyn? Yes, I will. Um, I actually, instead of specifying what the dimension is, I'll say that they must meet all the requirements for the reduced lot line section in this zoning ordinance. And is there any kind of review for the reduced lot line section? Yeah, so it really would come into play when lot three comes for development. I, I don't, well, I don't understand, honestly, because it's like making the a non conforming, it's making a structure that was conforming now non conforming. Well, that's the whole. So when you create a reduced lot line, maybe this will make it a little bit easier to understand. And when you, if you want to create a reduced lot line, you have to control ownership 
of all the land before you create the division. And that's what they're doing on the okay. property. So they're making the determination that they want to create a reduced lot line project. They couldn't do it um, if they didn't own the other side now. If they're selling lot three to someone else. If they sold lot three um, uh, before they came in for a zone. So what they'll have to do is file a zoning permit application saying we want to do a, zero, a reduced lot line for these lots and then once they do that, we evaluate it. Once they do that, then um, they can, um, th then it sort of, it's um, confirmed and it's, uh, it's been reviewed and then they can sell off lot three. It's fine now because it's all common ownership. So that it isn't really yes. five feet to the, to the lot line right. because they own the other lot. Right. right. Okay, that makes sense to me. So yeah, but if we can make a note about that, yep. that would be, I would, I would make a motion to endorse this with that note. Thank you, Chris. Any, is there a second to the notion? A second. All right, any discussion about this a &R or the motion? Uh, can I say something? I'm, I'm actually the potential homeowner at lot one. Hold on just a minute, Mr. Clapp. Um, so, Carolyn, just a, a note of kind of process. Um, this isn't really a public hearing, the a and right. right. um, So I think, Mr. Claps, your questions can be asked later on to Carolyn. Um, okay. If, okay, if you have some really, she'll, she'd be glad to answer your questions by email or telephone at any point. Okay. okay. Perfect. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so uh, the motion has been made and seconded. We don't have any questions at this point from the board members. We'll go to a roll call real quickly. Um, Jana? Yes. And Sam? Yes. David? Yes. Chris? Yes. And George? Yes. And that was the a &R on Nanaka. Now we have an ANR on Coles Meadow Road, or you pick, Carolyn, whichever next in your queue. Coles okay. Meadow, hook her out. Okay. So this is Coles Meadow. Um, this is for the purposes of um, um, beating open space to the city. So we do, this is um, the existing parcel on Coles Meadow Road, and there's this new property line in the back, so the back half that covers Broadbrook, this would be part of the Fitzgerald Lake holding. Um, so that's that's it. No new lots except just changing this boundary here. I move to approve the ANR. Second. All right, motion's been made and approved to uh, approve the ANR on Coles Metal Road. Any questions from the board? Any comment? This is a nice one, fairly straightforward. We'll go through that roll call. Um, David? Yep. Sam? Yep. Jana? Yes. Chris? Yes. And George? Yes. Unanimous. Hooker hey. Avenue, my neighborhood. <sighs> Hooker was named um, after a Civil War general. Okay. <laughs> See if I got this. Um, I wasn't told I'd have to learn something today. I didn't want you to okay. go south out of you all of a sudden, David. Oops. I can't pull up a CAD file, so that's what's happening here. So hold on just a second. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Bear with me. Come in. <laughs> okay. 23 hooker.
guess we missed that storm that was bubbling over our heads. It's gone already. It's been the nature of thunderstorms around here lately. You didn't get anything? No. We got we got a little rain. I thought it was pouring at my house. <laughs> um I'm sorry, this is taking so long. For some reason, um oh boy. Okay. Um I'm gonna go to the North Farms Road one instead, because I know I have that one. I mean, I have both of these, but I just need to look somewhere else. So let's do this one, download. Okay. So this is really, again, a swapping um, land from one parcel to the next to allow for expansion of the property. I'm just gonna have to I'll move this um, plan, go down a little bit. So here's North Farms Road. There's two existing parcels here. And there's, see this triangle here where the yellow keeps flashing <laughs> um, right here. The applicant wants to put this addition on in the back. And so they're swapping, they're gonna purchase a triangle here and then because they're both these lots are right at their minimum lot size, they're going to swap the same amount of land in this really skinny triangle <laughs> along here to the other parcel. So it's just a equal exchange of land area so that this addition can be accomplished. I move we uh, endorse the NR. Second. Motion has been made and seconded to endorse the ANR on North Farms Road. Good to see neighbors getting along nicely like this. Any comments besides that one? I'm surprised there are minimum lot areas here. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, a, a minimum lot just under two acre minimum is required. All right, hearing no questions about this one, we'll go to a roll call. Uh, Jana. Yes. And Sam. Yes. Chris. Yes. David. Yep. And George votes yes also. Okay, so um, this is I'm going to be showing you um, something. Don't don't mind the red text. <laughs> I can't. I've um, misplaced. I only have the CAD file for some reason in on my document. So I'm just going to show you the what's going to say preliminary, but it's really um, uh, not pre preliminary. <laughs> um, so here's the end of Hooker Avenue. And um, there's a house here, a house here. And the lot lines um, currently go, see this hatching here. I can zoom in on this piece. Parcel A is going to be um, transferred to this property. So it gives it this a little, it squares off this lot a little bit um, better. 423. So this line will disappear because they'll acquire this tiny little bit, which is 453 square feet um, from number 27. So it's just changing the lot boundary, sort of expanding it for 23 and shrinking it a little bit from 27. Keeps the gravel drive on 23's property. Okay. Yeah, and that's all going away, actually, because this is all going to be redeveloped for a single two units. So. I move we endorse the NR. A second. Motion has been made and seconded to endorse the NR on Hooker Avenue. Any comments, discussion? Hearing none, we'll go to a vote. Um, I'll start this time with David. Yes. And Chris? Yes. And Sam? Yes. Jenna? Yes. And George votes yes. Okay, unanimous. 
and ours are completed. Woo. Um, that's all I have on the agenda. Um, we do have a scheduled joint public hearing with the Legislative Matters Subcommittee um, uh, regarding a uh, map change to 40R on Bridge Road for August 8th. So I'll send that out next week um, once I get the Zoom information from the council clerk. What, what are you, are you gonna send some information about it? Like so we can have some background or? No. No, so we're you're just gonna showing go up. Cold. Yeah, yeah. I'll send you the zoning ordinance amendment that got referred out from the council and the agenda. Okay. Um, but it's an expansion of um, uh, the state's um, incentive zoning for creating housing, um, and particular affordable housing. And I see, speaking of state expanding things, I see that the state is allowing us to continue to have Zoom meetings, but urging us to do them hybrid. So for the foreseeable future, we're going to certainly have our August meetings by Zoom. Board voted on in June, I want to say that the summer meetings would be hybrid and then we, I mean, would be on Zoom. And then in September, we'd see how um, the pandemic is going and go back to in-person possibly. So we'll discuss that on the August 25th Zoom meeting. Figure out what yeah, we're doing I in think, September. Um, I may send out, um, I will have to do public hearing notices for the September meeting. Um, and I'd likely go ahead and put it as. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. A storm has reached uh -oh. Carolyn's house. To in person, you know, in oh. terms of changing oh. the notice. Okay. Great. Um, okay. And, and Carolyn, we're, we're short handed these days. Do you know that the mayor needs to be get a few phone calls to the planning board members urging her to nominate another board member so we're not in this diet? Well, I it may be a case of not having candidates. So if you all know I, people that would I, be interested I have a, in I have a good candidate who wants to do it. Okay. Have yeah, them I'll... fill out the application in the mayor at the mayor's um, page. Okay. Um, because you know we're down three, three. now. Yeah, yep. we're down three. Okay. And Sam, yep. have him or her also talk to their city councilor just so they're aware of it and can kind of help groom that process a little bit. You know. Okay. That would be great. And then, um, uh, not to be a pain in the butt, but I can read through the minutes. Um, can you help me? Uh, Kellen, can you just help me find the minutes for that NETA discussion so I can remind myself what I'm mis misremembering or remembering? Um, how about, I, yes, I can send you the link um, yeah. to the decision and then a copy of the minutes. Does that work? Yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, how would I, how would I even begin to know what <laughs> that was? It was, it was right. right. <laughs> Hey, yeah. um, one little piece of trivia for you historians out there. This uh, property we looked at on uh, Damon Road, the uh, Volvo dealership, right in the corner underneath the railroad tracks, there's a little, a big culvert with a, with a, uh, a dried up stream running through it. That's the remnants, about one of the few places where you could see the old Northampton Canal mm -hmm. that you've all heard a lot about. So if oh. anybody wants to go spelunking there and look at the canal, it kind of, then it disappears under King Street forever and go the other way, it disappears under 91, but it's kind of interesting to see it. Hmm. Wow. All right, well, Thanks. thank you, Carolyn. Good to see you, right. everyone. Right. Have so. a good rest of your July. Do we we'll need to, do we, sorry, do we need to vote to adjourn? Do we oh, not do that? You're right. I, I move we adjourn. Do it. Do it. All right. The most has been made and, and someone seconded. Second that. Seconded by Sam. Adjournment at 8.06. Yes. Um, Chris. Yes. 
and Jenna. Yes. And Sam. Yes. And David. Yes. And George. Yes. Okay.